Cook and I am a third grade teacher at Riverside Elementary School. I'm excited to help you take personalized learning to the next level in your classroom. Let's dive Let's talk about the steps to success. First, collect data to drive instruction through the use of a standards-based pretest. I have done this this year by deciding on the standard that I want to teach for the upcoming small group unit, and then I create a pretest and administer it to my students. Second, I then use the data to determine if my students are emerging, developing, or mastering the standard assessed. By emerging, I mean that your students have scored pretty low on the pretest. Maybe they only scored one or two questions correct. Developing means that your students have scored around a 75% or higher, meaning that they have some concept of the standard that has been assessed. And then when last, we have mastering the standard, and they can be placed on a mastery board, which means that you are pushing your students to the next level. Maybe this is the next grade above. Um, maybe you are just giving your students some harder tasks on the standard totally based on what you feel your students need, but you're obviously pushing them on to the next level because they have already mastered the standard and we want to give them that push that we need so they do not get bored during their independent work time or during your small groups. Third, you then would assign students a pathway board based on their level. Fourth, pull differentiated small groups to work with your students. And fifth is the best part. You get to watch your students grow and follow that pathway to success. Let's talk about these pathway boards. As you can see on the screen, we have three pathway boards available, emerging, developing, and mastery. The ones you see here are ones that I have recently used in my classroom that involved a pathway on two-step word problem and equations with unknowns. Like I've said before, this is a third grade class, so my emerging board kind of focuses around those skills that they should have mastered in second grade, but maybe they have some gaps that need to be filled. My developing board is based solely around the third grade standard, and then my mastery board includes some fourth grade material Material to push those kids a little bit further, not too much, but just enough that way they have um, their feet wet before they're getting to fourth grade and working on that next standard that comes next. So now we are going to go deeper into the developing pathway board, and I'm going to show you all the different pieces of the pathway board and how it works. So here you can see the math pathways board for the two-step word problem equations with unknowns. And if you look in the top right hand corner, you can see that this is a developing level board, meaning that this board is solely based around third grade standards. When my students are assigned this pathway, I assign it to them through Google Classroom and it's set up so that way they have a copy of their own and then that way they can work within the document and then they can turn it in when they are finished. The goal is for students to work independently on the math pathways as I am pulling differentiated small groups. A little bit later, I will show you that I also provide them with a hard copy of the pathway board. It's not as bright and colorful just for the simple fact of trying to save color um, ink on those printers, but I still like for them to have that hard copy so that way they can check off what they've completed and stay on that path to success. So let's go on to the next slide. When I first pass out pathway boards and assign them through Google Classroom, the first thing that I love to do with my students is dig deep. So here you can see we have our standard. A lot of times, I don't think that we uh, talk to our students about the standard. And this is one time thing that I have tried to be more cognizant about this year is that students see these standards and they have no clue what they mean unless you actually break it down for them. So what we try to do is we dig deep by decomposing the standard and making sure that the students understand what they are actually supposed to learn throughout this whole standard. The second thing that we do on their pathway board is we do a pretest reflection and goal setting. So the first question they have to answer is, how do you feel after taking the pretest? Do you feel happy? Do you feel sad? Are you okay? Because this is a third grade standard and you aren't supposed to know this yet. All kids have different feelings on how they feel after that pretest. And it's just great to be able to read their responses and see how they feel. 
The second part we have, it says, after reviewing your pretest, set a goal to meet during this pathway. And that's where we like to give them a little bit of time to look through that pretest real quick, see what part did you miss? Because when you really truly look at a standard, it's most of the time not just one part. I like to say there are different learning targets and maybe it's just one part of that standard that they missed. And so that could be the one thing that they maybe set a goal for themselves that they want to meet throughout the pathway. Third, I like to give those quotes just um, to make it a little bit more fun and talk to them about it and throw something interesting in there. So this one just says, mistakes allow thinking to happen. And that just spells out math. So now we're at the actual pathway board and maybe you're thinking, whew, that is a lot of stuff on that board. And maybe my kids at the beginning of the year thought so too, but they took it on full force with no fears and dove right in. If you look up in the top box where it says need help, these are just links to videos that maybe your students just need that extra little help. Maybe you're at that part of the standard you have not taught in small group yet, or maybe you have taught it and your kids just didn't understand it and they need a little something extra. I also provide them with a paper that says video notes for them to be able to take notes as they're watching those videos. The reason I do this is to one, just for myself, I know, hey, they needed that extra help. Maybe I need to go back and throw that into my small group. Or two, sometimes you have those kids, you know, that just like to watch videos all day. And if you see that they are either one watching the video, then you can have that little mental reminder like, hey, I saw them watching that video. I need to make sure they took their notes. And that way, if they don't, you can go over and assist them in checking off that box saying, hey, I saw you watching that video today. Probably need to check that box off. The next box is just worksheets. Um, I like to find a few things. Sometimes maybe it comes out of my everyday math journal or maybe my math masters. And if you're in a different district that doesn't use everyday math, maybe your math program offers some type of worksheets or journal sheets that you can use. And sometimes you can just find them online. I also like to include some digital games. And so those links will take my students right to those games. Um, I like to use Freckle. That is just a digital content. Um, it is also an app. It can be used online. Um, and so if you don't know what Freckle is, I suggest you go check that out. Um, I have learned this year too that Minecraft education offers lessons. Um, my students actually taught me that. And so we have been incorporating that into our boards as well. They had a lot of fun with this one, building two-step word problems. Um, then you can see next, I just include my everyday math math boxes. And these are just like simple math problems. And sometimes I said simple, but sometimes they're not so simple, but they kind of hit the standard that we're working on. Um, math boxes also have have a lot of different standards on one page. And so what I have done is I've went through those pages and I've picked out the ones that actually match the standard that we're working on. And actually in the front of our teacher manuals, it kind of gives us little stars to clue us into what pages and what, no, um, what pages we need to go to. And then I was able to determine quickly what numbers they need to do. The next box is Alex. Alex is just a digital content, content piece that our district offers for our students. And so that is one thing that's on my board here. Next, I have a performance test. And this um, takes them a little bit longer because there's more than one piece. A lot of times it is that they have to, um, they're basically showing me that they've mastered the standard for third grade. Um, they're applying that application piece to show me that they really understand what the standard means and that they fully understand the concept. And then last but not least, we have a checkpoint saying that, hey, I'm ready. I think I have mastered this standard or at least this pathway board and I am ready to move on. And so you can see there that I expect them to score 80% or higher to move on. Um, and I always ask them to screenshot their scores just for the simple fact that if I am teaching a small group um, I ask them not to interrupt me while I'm teaching my group. And so that way they can show me their scores during that last um, five to 10 minutes of our math small group block. Um, a few things that I did not mention on the board here is you'll see where it says located in math pathways folder. And that's on the worksheets box and the performance task. We give our students in my grade level pathway folders that just say math pathways on the front. And so this is a place where they can store their worksheets, their performance tasks is stored in there. And I also mentioned that I like to give my kids a hard copy of this pathway board as well. And I'm gonna show you that in just a few minutes. 
the next thing that I like to do with our pathway board is after we have went through all of the small group lessons and they have had time to work on these pathway boards, I then give them a post test to see their growth. Um, and so I ask them, how do you feel after taking the post test? And after they review their post test, is there anything else that they still need to work on? Because maybe there's some time that I might have find an extra little five minutes just to pull that kid. Maybe it's in the morning. Maybe it's during a different small group that maybe I finished up early um, and I'm able to say, hey, I saw you said you still needed help on this. Let's go over it real quick. And so that's just their po post-test reflection. And that is the last part of that pathway board. So here you will see the actual handouts that I give my student for their pathway boards. This is the hard copy that I like to print out. It's not as colorful as the actual pathway board that I assign them in Google Classroom, but that helps us to save ink. So here we can see that we have the emerging board and you can tell that by looking up in the top right hand corner. You can see that the emerging board is a little bit smaller than the developing board, but that's just because I want my kids that are below to move a little bit quicker and get to that developing stage. Page. The next slide you will see this is the video notes page that I like to print out and this goes with the emerging board. So I'm going to flip back real quick just so you can see. If you look in the need help box you can see the names of the actual videos that they're supposed to watch and those titles actually match what's on the video notes. Next, we come to the developing board that I would print out and give to those students who fall in that level and right after that there is their notes page as well. Last but not least, we have our mastery board. You can see that it's also a little bit smaller than that developing board. And that's just because most of the time I have found that majority of my students either fall in that emerging or developing stage. Um, we do have kids that get to that mastery level, but those are normally your high flyers. And um, we love when they get there, but they're not there for long. And so that's why this board is also a little bit smaller. And they also have that performance task that takes them a little bit longer. And so most of the time they don't ever finish the mastery board before we move on to the next standard. And as well, we have the video notes page for them. So now I'm going to move back over to the pathway boards and show you the emerging and the mastery boards real quick. Here is the emerging board for our math pathways around, centered around the topic two-step word problems with equations within knowns. Um, still with those kids, we still dig deep. And we do that as whole class. So it's not so much that the dig deep is different for the boards. It's just that I want them to all have that slide whenever we do that during our first lesson. We also do our reflection and goal setting for this piece. We still have that same quote from the other board. You can see that the board is smaller like I showed you in the hard copy printable that I showed you just a few minutes ago. And then last but not least, those children are asked to take that post-test reflection. And last, we have the mastery pathway board for the two-step word problems, equations with unknowns. We still also dig deep with those children that have also mastered that standard. We do our post our pre-test reflection and goal setting as well. We have our quote, we have our smaller board, and last but not least, these children are also asked to take that post-test reflection. Along with the blank template for the pathway board, I also wanted to include the printable handouts that you can give to your students as well. Um, and so I've also just went in here and I took out the information I had on my example boards so you can go in and um, put in what you would like to use in your classroom. So you can see we have the emerging board, we have the video notes page, you can go in and change the names of those videos, you have your developing board, same thing with the video notes, and then last you have that mastery board with the video notes page as well. So before I go, I wanted to let you know that these free resources will be available to you. You will have access to the digital and hard copy version of all three pathway boards. I hope that you are able to utilize these boards in your classroom as you take personalized learning to the next level. Thanks for watching.